With every match day of the Icons Global Championship 2022, the games grow more intense and today we have a special for you. We are going to show you all the way from dusk till dawn what it means to dominate on Riven. In the third game of the series between JT and Team Flash, Dawn chose to flap his broken wings to extinguish all of Team Flash's hopes of ever reaching the finals. While you're watching, you're going to learn the following with Riven. How to lane, how easy diving is, how to steal enemy resources, how to approach a fight and the strongest combination of items. When you play Riven, it's mandatory to understand why Don chooses to play lane like he does. Shai's Renekton cannot possibly measure up to the early game potency Dawn's Riven has to offer. As soon as Dawn sits inside of his own wave, Shai isn't allowed to get close and here's why. Dawn can simply choose to weave his first ability and auto attacks into Shai's Renekton while simultaneously clearing the wave. This difference in relative power is insurmountable for Shai at this stage and he has to keep his distance and take what is given to him. The issue with this, however, depending on the other matchups on the map and especially in the jungle, Shai's Renekton might be dove as Dawn is building a big minion wave that will eventually crash into Shai's tower. Briefly after, Dawn is free to choose either to dive Shai or to assist Cherry in taking away Team Flash's jungle camps. As Shai was patiently waiting in a brush to turn Dawn into his prey, Dai and Dawn choose to turn the tables and turn on the crocodile. Even under the safety of his own turret. Dawn knows that he isn't the one that should start tanking the tower as he's the primary damage dealer in this play. Consequently, Dai takes aggro first while Dawn is patiently waiting for that to happen. As soon as Dai initiates the play, Dawn follows and takes quick care of Shai's Renekton. Even though Dai nearly did a little oopsie by leaving the tower a little bit too early. As Dawn already took down his tier 1 tower, it's time to take away the enemy's resources. Whenever you have enough information on the enemy team and you know that you're stronger than an isolated 1v1, you should always attempt to snatch away enemy camps from the enemy team. That way you'll not only deny them gold income, but also increase your own, so it's a double positive. And Dawn knows exactly that Shai doesn't stand a chance thanks to his glorious first item, the Divine Sundra. Its spellblade passive is absolutely broken when you think about champions that have low cooldowns and can proc it consistently. Thinking about Riven, you already know what this means. Absolute domination while healing yourself constantly. How can Shai even dream of winning anymore? Spoiler, he just can't. Dawn is now finally able to unleash Riven's Wrath onto Team Flash. And another thing you have to understand is that if you take down your tower and lane, you'll unshackle yourself from the typical laning pattern and you'll be able to impact the map with rotations. In this case, Dawn has set his eyes on Empty, Zaizu and Coyote as they're trying to go for a play that cannot possibly work. Before the fight starts, Dawn casts his ultimate ability to gain bonus attack damage, with which he has but one goal in mind, obliterating everything in his way. The key takeaway in this play is that Riven is able to influence the fight from afar with her ultimate ability and she can stick to anyone thanks to her super low cooldowns. As you see, Zaizu cannot physically escape Dawn's grasp and falls eventually while trying to face Dawn's valor. Next up, you're going to witness Dawn's prowess when it comes to removing counterplay. In order to do so, Dawn flashes in his third charge of his first ability and catches Empty and Coyote at the same time. Both are trying to escape once again, but as you've already witnessed beforehand, you can't escape Dawn's Riven. This is also something we have to briefly talk about. When you're traveling around the map, you should make sure to use your abilities to your advantage. You may jump over walls with the third charge of your first ability, and you can generally just increase the speed on the map thanks to your abilities. Something you all have to know when it comes to Riven is a durability. Dawn is currently in the midst of a crazy fight and soaks up tons of damage. As Dawn survives the unrelenting onslaught, he continues to chase down Zaizu to put him to his final rest. So even after tanking the burst damage of the entirety of Team Flash, Dawn was still able to get out of the chaos and ride to this target of choice. This is something Riven loves to do and Dawn does it perfectly. Tank burst damage, go into a fight and leave it immediately afterwards to find a new opportunity on a second rotation of cooldowns. Because patience is a virtue. Before we dive into the next play, it's mandatory from my perspective to show you the unholiness of a certain combination of items. I'm talking about Divine Sandra, Black Cleaver and Death's Dance. Once you assemble this trifecta of brokenness, you're set for success. Divine Sandra on every Spellblade proc will grant you extra health, while the flat stats from Black Cleaver empower you even more. Next up comes the Death's Dance, which is a so-called streaking item. What does this mean? Once you get a kill, every damage that was staggered by the item is cleansed and immediately you're healed. If we had triumphed to the mix, you become a true warlord of fighting. But now, let's observe Dawn in the next fight. 
Don is caught by Empty's engage and is crowd controlled many times during the fight as he's left alone in the midst of the entirety of Team Flash. Coyote, Empty, Ellie, Shy and Zaizu are attempting to remove Don from the rift, but just as they've gotten so close, Don chooses to turn golden right before removing Zaizu from the equation. With that kill in his pocket, Deathstun starts healing him for a significant amount as he leaves the fight. Now with Team Flash cooldowns burned, it's now an easy feat for JT to wipe the floor with them. But take note of Dawn's HP after the fight has ended. He is nearly back to full HP. What a glorious combination of items. And so Dawn chose to end Team Flash's story of becoming the icon in 2022. But to showcase the story behind Dawn in terms of numbers, we've prepared something for you. Contrary to public belief, Baron Lane had a massive impact in this game as Dawn held around 73% KP to his name, while also funneling more than 850 gold right into his pocket that contributed to his ability to dish out more than 1000 damage per minute. What's the word for that again? Call it flawless, just like his KDA. You can't get enough? Then don't worry because we have all you need. Just check out the following links and enjoy your stay. See you soon.